Hallelujah. He is Jireh. He is more than enough. More than anything we can ask or imagine. And we give God, we give you the praise. Father, we thank you that you are more than enough for us. Father God, we ask that you have your way in this day. Speak to our hearts, Lord God. Lord God, we put this service in your hands and continue to look to you, Holy Spirit, to have your way. In this church, in this congregation, Father God, those who are watching through live stream, have your way. And help us to take this word with us that we can apply it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God is so good. Amen. And all the time, you know, this morning the Lord put a word that's been on my heart and it's been heavy on me uh, for even for the past week. You know, the title for today's sermon is, is I'm going to speak to you to I'm speaking to you today about windows of opportunity, windows of opportunity. And, you know, where this came from. This actually derived from a conversation that I had about a week ago that really just kind of messed with my mind. I mean, after this conversation, it was only a week I, I have not been the same. And I even posted about this yesterday. You know, last weekend, Sue and I, we were at Wes's studio. And we were, um, Sue and Wes is working on a project together. That's the shirt I'm wearing. This is from Wes's studio. And... We sit down before we start working for the day, whatever it is that God put on our hearts to do that day. And for that particular day, you know, we sat down and we catch up and then we start working. But Wes shared something that he said, man, it's been a tough week. He was sugaring up. And so we're like, what's going on? And he said, you know, I just found out through a mutual friend that a friend of ours had just passed away. And we was like, man, we're so sorry. Our condolences. And he's like, yo, Josh and Sue, I just spoke to this man two days, two, a couple of days ago. And, and, and the fact that the next time I hear about him, he's no longer with us. And so Wes began to talk about this young man. He was a young man. He had two kids, two young kids. And, and, and Wes began working with him as an artist. And apparently he was, Wes said, you know, Joshua, this, this young man, he was so gifted, so talented. One of the, I mean, one of the things he can do, I don't see other artists able to do that. He can sit down and just start thinking and construct an entire song in his mind, an entire verse, no pen or paper. And he'll sit there and, and he'll just go and you see him working in his mind. And he'll get up and go into the booth and record it on one take. He said, I, I, I work with a lot of artists, and I don't see many like that. And he says, and this young man was so talented, but, but even though music was his passion, there was something that was holding him back. Now, if you know Wes, Wes is one of those people where, uh, 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 one of the friends where if you mess around and tell him what it is you want to do in your heart, he's going to be on top of you until he sees you taking action. And so this young man told Wes, you know what, my dream is to record an album. I want to have my own album. And Wes was working on him and working on him and working on him. And finally, he agreed that he's going to do it. And the album was, 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 I mean, the project was a beautiful project. And it was when they were two-thirds or so of the way done of this album, that's when Wes got that news. And so Wes was like, what he and their mutual friend are going to do, they're going to finish the project for him. In honor of his name, but also to put something in his family's hands to say, this was the work of your loved one. But it, for me, I was like, man, we, we, we even prayed for his family. But from that day, from last Saturday, not to yesterday, last Saturday to, to this whole week, I've just been sitting there and I've been thinking, you know, what, 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 am I, what, what in my life, something that I really want to do in life that I keep putting off? What is it that those things that I know God has put in me to do and, and, and there's something that's holding me back and I'm not stepping out. And this question is not just for me, but it's for you as well. You see, life, the Bible says life is but a vapor. You're here today, you could be gone tomorrow. We don't know what tomorrow holds, but there's something in you today. Why are we holding on to that thing? What is it that you're holding on to that you should be letting go? 
What are those passions? What is those gifts that God has put in you? And what is holding you back? You see, the enemy will use fear. I saw a statistic that said one of the top three reasons why people don't step out and do what they really want to do is because of fear. Fear if what if it don't go the way they plan? Fear of failure. Fear of what others might say. But at the end of the day, if you live your life holding on to what's inside of you, the only thing you're going to be left with is regret. I heard Bishop Jake says, don't live your whole life only to look back to wonder what would have happened if I had more courage. You see, there is an opportunity with every person's name on it in this room. There's something that I, I can say this boldly and I'll, st- I'll go out on a limb. There's something that every person under the sound of my voice wants to do in life. But the thing about it is there is a window to that opportunity. Amen? And so the question is, what are we waiting for? How long are you going to hold on to it? You know, this, this story, it, it really like hit me in a different way because I began to look at life. Sometimes we can get caught up in the motions. We can get caught up in the day-to-day and we can just assume that tomorrow is promise. But what are we doing today with what God has given us? I want you to open your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew 25. And I'm going to be reading from from verse 1. From the New Living Translation. If you dare say amen. Amen. Scripture says, then the kingdom of heaven will be like 10 bridesmaids who took their lamps and went with the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The five who were foolish didn't take enough olive oil for their lamps, but the other five were wise enough to take along extra oil. When the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, they were roused by the shout, Look, the bridegroom is coming. Come out and meet him. All the bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. Then the five foolish ones asked the others, Please, give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. But the others replied, We don't have enough oil for all of us. Go to a shop and buy some for yourselves but while they were gone to buy oil the bridegroom came then those who were ready went in to meet with him and to the marriage feast and the door was locked somebody said the door was locked later when the other five bridesmaids returned they stood outside calling lord lord open the door for us but he called back believe me i don't know you So you too must keep watch, for you do not know the day or the hour of my return. And and God's people said, somebody say windows of opportunity. Come on, somebody say windows of opportunity. There's three key points I want to make today about opportunities, and I really pray that you'll take this with you. Because there's so much potential that's on the inside of this room. For those of you who are watching, there's so much potential that's on the other side of that camera. And, and God did his job. The Bible says that he, he knew you before you were in your mother's wounds. And he knows the plans for your life. The plans to prosper you and not harm you. To give you hope in the future. God put inside of you what he wants to give you to do what you're supposed to do in this world. Everybody is in here for a purpose. In Jeremiah 29, 11, when he says, I know the plans that I have for you. Some other translation says, I know the thoughts that I have of you. Those plans or thoughts is to prosper you, not harm you, to give you hope in the future whether your bible says plans or whether your bible says thoughts they both come from the hebrew word makashaba which means purpose i know the purpose that i have for you come on somebody say i have a purpose 
I have a purpose. You see, this world, if you allow the world to define you, they'll make you believe that you're just here. There's nothing special about you. There's nothing you're supposed to do. Just do what you're, just do the day to day and go home. This is it. What, what, what these people are doing, that's great. This is for the elite. But God says, I didn't put anyone here without a purpose. Every person here has a purpose. And if your purpose came from God, then it's great. We just declared he's a great God. Amen. Great and mighty is he. Amen. He's put a purpose in you. There's something that he has in mind that you're supposed to do on this earth. But the Bible says the enemy is a thief. Jesus says, be careful. The thief comes not but to do what? To steal, to kill, and to destroy. Jesus says, I come that you might have life and life more what? He didn't come there so that you can just have life. He didn't come so that you can just survive. He came that you may have life more abundantly, that you won't be surviving but thriving. But we can't be looking to the outside to have that abundant life. If you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you got everything you need. The Bible says greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So as long as we look into the world to define us and to affirm us, we will never step out and do what we're called to do. You got to know that you are already equipped. The Bible, when, when David showed up to fight Goliath, you saw and looked at him and said, you're nothing but a young man. This man has been fighting since his youth. And David said, the same God who delivered me from the bear, the same God who delivered me from the lion is the same God that will deliver me from this uncircumcised Philistine. So Saul was like, okay, well, you know what? Here, take my armor. Take my armor. In other words, in my eyes, I don't see that you're equipped for the job. But David was wise. He put on the armor and it felt clunky. And, and, and when you think about it, if you wasn't brave enough to wear this armor, why are you trying to give it to me? Saul didn't go fight Goliath. He waited and gave a reward for anyone else who would. But David took it off and he knew that what he had in his hand, his sling and his rocks, that's what, he, that's what God had gave him from the beginning. And that's what he took into the fight. You are already equipped. Come on, somebody say, I'm already equipped. When, when, he told, when God told Moses, you're going to go and deliver my children out of, my, out of Egypt. He says, who am I? What should I do? He says, you're going to take this rod, this rod that you've been using already to shepherd your father-in-law Jethro's sheep in Midian. That's what you're going to take with you. And when Moses went and stood before the Red Sea and turned around and saw the Egyptians coming after them, he looked to God and God said, lift your hands. What is in your hand? It was when he took what God had already gave him and actually did something with it. That's when the Red Sea split. God didn't come down and split the Red Sea. Moses was equipped. All he had to do was be obedient. The Bible says, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Stop looking at yourself as less than or that I don't have what I need. There is no such thing as a perfect time to step out. The Bible says in Ecclesiastics that a farmer who watches every cloud never harvests. The farmer who watches the weather never plants. Farmers got to say, regardless of how it looks outside, I got to go plant my seed. There's a seed in each and every one of you. And so God is saying that there's a window to every opportunity. Don't allow anything to come and stall you. I heard Sue say this one time. She said, because sometimes we all can, anybody can ever, you guilty, sometimes you can be a perfectionist. Sometimes you could do it and work on it. You'd be like, okay, it's good. And then right when you're about to turn it in, you crumble it up. No, it could be better. And then you just, and you struggle because it's just never perfect. Anybody ever deal with that sometimes? You know, but I heard Sue say something one time. She says, finished is better than perfect. If you're waiting for it to be perfect, it will never be perfect. There's things you just got to step out and trust God. Do what he told you to do and then step out. Amen. So three key points I want to make here about opportunities. And please, brothers and sisters, I don't want anyone else to have an opportunity and you forfeit it because of something the enemy has said, whether it's through a person, whether it's through a family member, whatever it is. I want us all to, as they say, as Dr. Miles Monroe said, he says, when I leave, I want to leave empty. 
I want to say, God, everything you gave me to do, I did it. I have nothing left. Paul said it. Paul says, I've been poured out like a drink offering. I've given everything. I've run my race. I've finished my course. I pressed towards the prize. Paul knew he was empty. He had nothing left. That's the only way you can live a life and look back and be proud. You see, this is what I found, and I'm going to give you these three points. The difference between living a life that's thrilling and fulfilling versus living a life that's upset with regret is all dependent on what we do with the opportunities that we get. We cannot have a spirit of missed opportunities. There's so much God wants to do in you and through you. But you have to step out because there's also a window to that opportunity. Amen? The first thing I want you all to know is that Point number one, opportunities are available for everyone. Opportunities are available for everyone. Never look at yourself as if you don't have what it takes. The Bible says there was 10 bridesmaids. All 10 of them had lamps. Only five of them did something with their opportunity. If you were to continue reading, Jesus spent this whole first half or even chapter talking about the value of time and action because the parable right after this is the parable of the talents you see every opportunity may look different from person to person this person's opportunity may look different from yours and in the and that was a struggle that i had in when i when i read the parable of the talents because it says that the kingdom of god is like a master who entrusted his servants before he went on a long trip and he says to one he gave five talents and then talents, the Bible may say bags of silver or whatever. I think it's interesting that they use talents and how it was equated with money. He said to one, he gave five talents. To another, he gave two talents. And to another, he gave one talent. So when I first read this a couple of times, I said, Lord, it was never fair to begin with. It was never fair, but there's two things he pointed out to me. The first thing he said was that the scripture says he gave them each according to their ability. There's things we're praying for that we can't handle right now. A, a blessing before its time is actually a burden. You see, maybe your talent, may, you, maybe your opportunity may look different, but this person who's doing this at this level, who knows what they went through to get there? Who knows? Who knows? See, they were prepared through the process. The process prepared them to be entrusted with what they're doing in this level. But everybody started somewhere. The Bible says, despise not humble beginnings. God, what if God wants to see what you're going to do with this before he bless you with that? But we're, we're sitting here with this and we have our eyes on that and we're complaining. And so the first thing is that he gave to each according to their ability. Somebody say according to their ability. And when you look at it, the first thing is that that's the first key. He doesn't want to give you more than you can handle. The second key is this. It says the five, the one who had five came back with an additional five and said, look, master, you gave me five. I got five more. Here's ten. And then the one who got two, he says, you gave me two. I brought back two. Here, master, it's four. But the one who had one, he buried it, did nothing with what he was given. And so before we even mention him, look at the second key. If you look at verses 21 and 23, the one who was given five and the one who was given two both got the same reward. It wasn't about what they were given. It was about what they did with what was given. If you look at it, it says, well done. Verses 21 and 23, at least in the New Living Translation, is identical. The same response. Well done, my good and faithful servant. I gave you little. I, you, were, you were responsible for what I've given you. Enter into glory. The exact same reward. So we're looking at the measures, but God is looking at the action. Opportunity is available. If you are here and you're present this morning, if you're watching me from live stream, there's an opportunity with your name on it. The question is, what are you doing with that opportunity? Amen? Come on, somebody look to your neighbor and say, what are you doing with your opportunities? Come on, look to another neighbor and say, what are you doing with your opportunities? You notice there was 10, 10 bridesmaids. Only five of them acted out on an opportunity. So number one is what? Opportunities are available for some people, 
for the elite, for the ones who have a network, those who are, has the education, no opportunity is available for who? Everyone. The second point is this. For every opportunity, there is a window. There's a window. Once the opportunity is presented, the timer starts. And you can't keep putting things off. You know, last month, I put out a video on social media and, and I had some engagement. And people were like, you know what, this was for me. And it was just something the Lord showed me of an experience I had. I witnessed something unusual in traffic one day. And I can't say, I won't say it's unusual, but for that day, it really caught my attention more than others. I was driving one day and I was coming to a stoplight. And the light, and, and, and as I came to a complete stop, that's when I witnessed something unusual. I noticed that the light in the far left turning lane was green to go. But the person who was sitting there was at a complete standstill just like us. And so after watching for a few seconds, you know, in your mind, you start to say, well, you know, maybe we should check. Maybe they're okay. Until finally the car started moving and then it had to stop. Because their light that was once green had turned yellow. And when they saw it, it had turned red. And so they missed their opportunity to go. And I didn't make fun of them. I didn't laugh at them because the truth is I would be a hypocrite. I mean, if I was to say you don't have to lift your hands, that, that happened to probably some of us. You know, and so, but the thing that the Lord really started to minister to me was that there is so much in distractions in this world. That's trying to distract you from what's really important. There's a destination for each and every one of us. There's a place that God has for each and every one of us. A promised land. Something he wants you to do and achieve. But along the way, there will be so many distractions. And if we are too caught up in the distraction, we will miss out on our opportunities. Because by the time we looked up, it was too late. There's so much that's happening in life. And, and, and I, it could be in your phone. It could be the conversations. It could be what we're watching, what you're, you're binge watching something. And then the, but the thing about it is the more we're caught up with distractions, the more we're not focusing and we're missing opportunities. Whatever it is God has called you to do. I don't know. Maybe there's a business in this room that's in someone's heart and mind. Maybe there's an idea. Maybe someone has it in their mind. They want to go back and finish school. Maybe there's, a, there's music. Maybe there's books. Maybe there's inventions. There's ideas. I don't know. There's so much in this room. But it can't stay inside of us. And the thing about it is whatever it is you dream of doing, the only way that can become a reality is if you take action when you meet opportunity. I heard, I heard someone say where, where preparation meets opportunity, purpose is discovered. What are you doing before the opportunity arrives? The five wise, the five wise bridesmaids, they went to sleep just like the other five. You notice it didn't say once five of them stayed up and worked all night while the other five. No, it says that the, bride, the bridegroom was delayed. All ten of them went to sleep, but only five of them went to sleep prepared. Only five of them went and did what they had to do so that they could be prepared for the opportunity when it arrived. I heard someone say in the, uh, in the music industry, I, I became successful because I learned this theory. You must always be ready so you never have to get ready. Always be ready for your opportunity. Amen? So number one, opportunities are available for everyone. But in the point number two, for every opportunity, there is a, there's a window to that opportunity. There's a timer going. There's a timer going right now for the idea God has given you. For some of us, the idea was given to you months ago, weeks ago, or even years ago. Some of you may have a book with all the things that God has put in you. And the thing about it is you're still present. You're still present, but the clock is ticking. What is it that you want to do in life that you're not doing today? Amen? And so one, God has given opportunities to everyone. Two, for every opportunity, there is a window. Three, passivity leads to missed opportunities. Passivity leads to missed opportunities. The word passive is defined as in the, in the dictionary as lacking in energy or will. They even went on to use the word lethargic. 
You know, that's the word that we always think about, you know, when you have young kids and if they have a fever or maybe they had a stomach bug and you say, you make sure they stay hydrated because one of the signs of being dehydrated, you, they become, they, their, their energy is gone. They become lethargic. Well, it's saying pass, being passive is like being lethargic. You're there, you see your opportunities and you're not doing anything. Nothing to prepare for it. And another definition was that it's, it's, it's receiving or enduring Without resistance, meaning to be submissive, just taking whatever life can give you. There's no way you can seize your opportunity when you're just letting life happen to you. You know, I was reading the Bible one time and, and I, kinda, I, I, I wrote this down because I heard it. It says, don't just accept life for what it is. Make life accept you for who you are. You are a child of God. You don't just got to take anything. You are a child of God. You know, I heard a businessman say he, um, he was first generation entrepreneur. He was in a room full of other entrepreneurs, but God put in him a business. He didn't come from money. He didn't come from resources, but God put in him to do business. And he was in a room with other entrepreneurs and they been, they began talking about their family and the line they came from. You know, and so he sat there and he says, by the time it got to him, you know, he, he joked around and he was like, do you know who my father is? He's talking about the king of kings. He's talking about the Lord of lords. He says, I listen, I, I, I'm going to accept the fact that it is God who gave me the spirit of entrepreneurship. And where God guides, he provides. We just sing, he's Jaira. Okay, somebody say Jaira. He is our provider. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter what the other person have compares to you or what you don't have. You have a God who sits on the throne. The Bible says that he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Paul says, I have seen, the Bible says, Paul says, I, my God shall supply all your needs according to what? His riches and glory, that is where? In Christ Jesus, not in your bank account. Your riches and glories in Christ Jesus. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Or if you're waiting for something before you step out on your opportunity, you're being passive. And passivity leads to missed opportunities. You got to just be aggressive. The Bible says from the time of John the Baptist to now, the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Since we were talking about, since I was talking about Wes, it's, it's every time I step in West studio, I, I'm just reminded about what faith can do. I'm just reminded. We were sitting in Bible study in this fellowship hall and it's been on his heart and it's started getting heavier and heavier to the point where, where we are in Bible study, the Holy Spirit is ministering to Wes and he's just sitting there and he just has this intense face because the Lord is dealing with him. And he says, you know, this, the Lord gave me this idea from years ago to do this studio but 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 he kept questioning questioning his qualities he kept questioning himself until finally Wes Wes has this thing about him that once he makes a decision soon I laugh about it all the time once Wes makes a decision that's it and so he said you know what I'm going to do it I'm going to do it and we're like all right well praise God we, we stood up and we all prayed and 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 then next thing you know Wes texts us and say I got the studio and we was like what he was like, I don't have the money, but I got the studio. I just went and showed up. I found the garage. Next thing you know, he says, I'm going to build. We're going to build the studio. And, and many people were a part of it. Pastor was a part of it. Because, and and Wes now, Wes has a fully functioning studio where artists are coming to him to make their music. But here's the thing. This is what God put us in certain places. There's people who are connecting with Wes and actually interested in hearing about, about God where in other, any other scenario, they're not. And now they're calling Wes with questions. Wes felt bad this past Wednesday. We had Bible study and he texted us. He said, looks like I'm going to miss Bible study. I'm sorry. He was in a six hour conversation with an artist who came to record a song because this person had questions about Jesus. This is why we can't hold on to what's inside of us. God put these gifts in you for the world. I believe that's why it's called a gift. But the enemy comes to steal to kill and destroy because if he can stop you he can hurt millions god i heard i heard a pastor say god blesses you with other people in mind once anything that he puts into your hands god is already thinking about how is it going to be a blessing in someone else's life in his name amen and so your faith is enough faith moves mountains 
Faith, faith, your faith is enough. We have seen God do things, and the only thing we had was our faith. The Bible says, without, the Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. If you can see it, you don't need faith. But it's that thing that inside of you that you want to do in life, which you can't see right now, faith can bring it to pass. Hold on to your faith, brothers and sisters. Because there's an opportunity with your name on it. But that opportunity has a window. The clock is ticking. Somebody say, windows of opportunity. I read, and I'm going to close with this. I was looking at the, the, the Bible commentary. And it says, notice that the five bridesmaids who were prepared, they were, they were referred to as, as wise and foolish, not bad and good. But prudent and imprudent, thoughtless and thoughtful. He didn't say they were bad. They were foolish because they did nothing with those opportunities that they had. And at the end of the day, the door closed. And because they were unprepared, they missed out on what they've been waiting for. Amen? Inaction breeds doubt and fear. Action breeds confidence and courage. The more we are standing there and doing nothing, the bigger it looks like. The bigger the situation, the opportunity looks like. Anybody ever decided that, you know what, enough is enough? You were ready for change. Something had to change about your situation. I don't know if it was in your finances, your relationships, or whatever at work. But you finally, and the opportunity was before you the entire time, but it looked too big. And then enough is enough. You finally stepped out. And now that you stepped out, you realize it wasn't as bad as I thought it was. Has that ever happened to anyone? Anybody ever did something or accomplished something? It was a test you were preparing for that you was afraid to take, a certification. There was something. Once you actually stepped out, you realize, wow, this is actually, this is doable. But as long as we are passive, it would always seem like it's impossible. Number one, opportunities are available to everyone. Number two, for every opportunity, there is a what? And number three, passivity leads to what? So I'll say this again. When we look back over our lives, whether we live a life that's thrilling and fulfilling or a life that's upset with regret, it's all dependent on what we do with the opportunities that we get. May you leave today and go back and look at everything that you believe in God for and say, I'm going to step out on opportunity. That story of that young man, it rocked me because he was young. In fact, Wes told me he was younger than us. But he was nearly complete with what he wanted to do his for how long? And, and tragedy struck. We got to step out. We are here. We're present. There's opportunities with your name on it. And there's even a bigger opportunity this morning. If you are here this morning and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You see, this parable was talking about the return of Jesus. And it said that, that five of them did something about the opportunities. The five, other five didn't. And when, the, when it was time and, they, and the five foolish ones tried to go and do what they had to do after hours, after time. By the time they gave back, the door was closed. And they banged on the door and said, Lord, Lord, let us in. And he says, believe me, I don't know you. There's only way into heaven, one way into heaven, and that is through Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. If you've never received Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, don't miss out on this opportunity. You can, do, you can receive him today just by asking him to come in. Any person in here who is a believer, who's a Christian, we all had to pray this prayer. And I'm going to pray right now. And I'm going to ask everyone to bow their head and close their eyes. And I want to pray this prayer with you. And I want you to repeat after me. But you have to repeat it and open your mouth and say it. It says, it's with your mouth you, you, you speak, you confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And we'll all pray together. But don't let this opportunity pass you by that you could potentially 
get to the door and it's closed because you didn't step out on your opportunity. If Even if you were saying, you know what, Josh, I made that opportunity, but uh, I, I took advantage of that opportunity. I asked Jesus to come in, but I, I don't feel like I'm as close to him as I should be. I, I, I strayed, but I'm ready to come back. And I want to rededicate my life. You can pray this prayer too. So every head bow, every eye closed, even you watching at home, if you want to make a, take advantage of this opportunity, please don't let this time go by without doing that because tomorrow's not promised to anyone. So let's pray this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus. Come on, let's say that louder. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for my sins. Thank you for raising from the dead. I believe that you are the son of God. Forgive me for all my sins. Thank you for the opportunity to get to know you. And so right now, I ask that you come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Cleanse me and help me to live a life of fulfilling every opportunity that you have given me. In Jesus' name. Every head bow, every eye closed. If you prayed that prayer today and you just for the first time received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, every head bow, every eye closed, I just want you to lift your hands. If you received Jesus this morning to be your Savior and Lord, or if you're rededicating your life to him, just lift your hands. I just want to know where you are so we can continue to pray for you. Come on, just lift your hands if you did pray that prayer. And if you prayed it and you're at home, please, there'll be a number at the end of service. Call us and let us know because we want to pray with you and we want to walk with you in this walk. Amen? Amen. So, as we stand to get ready to close with this final song, He knows my name. He knows your name. And there's something He's called each and every one of you to do in life. But don't miss out on those opportunities that He put before you. Step out and watch what God does. Watch what God does. All He's looking for is obedience. Just step out and do what he do. Make the, take the first step. Whatever, whatever it is, if it's the business, if it's whatever it is, just take the first step and just watch God. There will be confirmations after confirmations that he's with you. There will be things that you thought was going to be hard as part of the process. And you're going to see he already worked it out. There are certain things that's in front of you that you can't see that he has already worked out. When the Israelites stood outside of Jericho, they were like, there's giants on the other side. We're like grasshoppers compared to them. But it's when the spies went in and spoke to Rahab, she said, we all here are afraid of you guys. We were just waiting for you to come and take the town. There's things that we are afraid of that's on the other side of the wall that we really want. But the enemy will do whatever he can to make you not go after the things you want. Isn't that crazy? There's things that you want in life that you will refuse to go after because of fear. But this time, I want you guys to know I'm going to take advantage of this life that God has given me. This air that I breathe, this, this, this body he has given me. I'm going to go and do what he called me to do. And when you do, brothers and sisters, I pray that you do. When you start seeing it happen for you, please let us know so we can testify. Because there's so many people who are not living they're not living according to their full potential. But when they hear testimonies about what God has done, when I go into the West Studio, every time I go, I'm encouraged. He did it with nothing but his faith. And now it's generating income for him and his family. In faith. So I want you all to step out and don't miss your window of opportunity. Come on, let's give God praise.